Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Bandai SH Monster Arts, the Predator Wolf Heavy Armed version. From the Alien vs. Predator line of uh, Bandai releases comes the Monster Arts release of Predator. It is. It says, introducing SH uh, Monster Arts, a revolutionary new monster action figure series uh, incorporating state-of-the-art SH Figure Arts technology. He does have a multitude of different accessories. He does also have a warning choking hazard. Small parts not for children under three years of age. The side of the box features some artwork there of the Predator Wolf. As well as the back, a couple of different ways that you can pose the figure. It says this figure is sculpted in meticulous detail and articulated joint areas have been developed in a way that does not compromise proportion. Armor parts employ die-cast material for more exquisite look. A figure set includes an extensive array of Predator weapon accessories. Two expanding versions of the spear are included in a set and recreated with preci precise detail. Interchangeable face parts are included in set for portrayal of two facial expressions. And then finally, just on the underside of the package, uh, just uh, again recommend for ages 15 and up, you can also go to Bluefin as well, Bluefin Corporation as well, one of the distributors for uh, Square Enix, or, or Bandai, I should say, uh, SH Figure Arts. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're going to get a better look at the new Bandai SH Monster Arts Predator Wolf Heavy Armed version. It's more handy way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. All right, now with the SH Monster Arts Predator out of packaging, let's get a better look at the figure. Now, I said it was a relatively new figure. I think it's been around for a bit. Spot found this actually at his local comic book store. And uh, I'm glad I did. It's actually a really great looking figure. A couple of things I'm a little disappointed with, I have to be honest. Uh, now, currently he is unmasked. He does have a helmeted version as well. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, Body-wise and everything else, he comes together quite well, although one issue I kind of have already with the figure, looking from initial looks, is that the mandibles that are extending out from his head are a different color from the rest of his head itself. The head is almost more of a dark, I want to almost say olive green beige color, whereas the mandibles are a much brighter beige color. They don't, they don't come together. I'm a little disappointed by that. They don't quite come together. This one's not as bad. But this one right here is very glaringly different from the rest of his head. The face is pretty good. It's not It's not bad. I'll say that. It's not bad. I feel like a company like NECA could have probably delivered a better head sculpt and paint. But at any rate, he does come with a couple of other... Uh, mandibles as well, which is kind of interesting because he seems to come with a lot of extra things. The mandibles that also came with this figure look like they are roughly the same, although it's a little bit more wrinkled, as you can see on the side, versus the one that I've currently got in there. They peg out of place pretty much the same way as if you had the Adley Hot Toys Predator. It does basically the same thing. I guess this one, yeah, this one does come out just a little bit further than the other ones. Yeah, as you can see there. It does stick out just a little bit more. There's also a secondary one, which pegged just into the bottom here. You really, I feel, have to put a lot of pressure onto these, which I don't like because that makes me worrisome about these state of the pieces when I'm trying to push them all the way in like this. But you really have to do a lot of pushing, a lot of force to add these pieces into place. And still, you can see how that mandible is not at all the color of the rest of his head, which really is disappointing for me. Um, you know, these are figures that are certainly a little bit more expensive, depending on what comic, there we go. Depending on what comic book stores you get them in, these figures could range anywhere from $60 to $80, because they are, they are after all, imports. So for that, I would almost hope, or I would almost expect, that the coloring of something as simple as mandibles could be the same color as the rest of his head. Like, this one isn't so bad. This one flows pretty good coloring-wise. 
This one, on the other hand, it almost seems like the paint's been left off of it. Uh, other than that, though, like, the head is good. The eyes you can almost barely make out, but they, they, are, they are in there. Let's see if we can actually get a little closer. There we go. As you can see, the eyes are in there. The paint is, again, very dark. Very, almost like olive almost a greenish beige color for making up the majority of his head. He's got a dark crown and his hair sporting on the back there. You can also see he's got the uh, the side mounted cannon also. But heavily armed is absolutely correct. That's a good that's a good comment or statement to make about this figure because he seems to have everything in like spades. He's got for example a secondary cannon which, uh, you know, you can, I think this one actually does, yeah, if I don't drop it, this one pegs on to the other shoulder here. All right, so let's go ahead and peg the other cannon. It's a little difficult because there's a, the hinge is so close to the base of where that secondary cannon is. As you can see though, you can attach both of them in place. Excessive, yes, but well, Wolf Predator was there to hunt, and he being the more experienced of Yujas would explain why. He's just got tons and tons of weapons. Uh, one of the other looks that you can go with this guy, I'm going to take this cannon out for a second. And this one I'm just going to fold back, just kind of get it out of the way. I want to take the tendrils out of his face, just like that. Because he does also come with a secondary head, which has the more battle-damaged helmet there. It's probably going to be more so the look that I'm going to go for when I'm displaying this guy. Now, when you take the head off, the necklace does come off a lot too, so just kind of be weary of that. And we'll go ahead and attach the new head. which. Can be a little difficult because unfortunately, like there's the ball joint there. It's very small and you have to get it around the predator's hair, which is fighting with you the whole time that you're attaching the head in place. The helmeted uh, alternate head is quite nice. It's almost a gunmetal gray, which also carries over to the shoulder pad area and gauntlets of the, uh, the actual armor that he's wearing. Carries also down to the little uh, thigh areas, as well as the lower leg shin guards, if, if you will, as well. The head almost comes across, dare I say, comes across just a little too big on the figure. Seems the moment you change this head out, not that the other head wasn't this, you know, glaringly large, but it does also make it seem like he's off proportioned. Like his body really should be longer than the head now that I've added to the shoulder area. But I mean, likely again, I'm probably gonna be displaying him more so with the helmeted head rather than the unhelmeted head. The tendrils also could be a big indicator as to why, but I do kind of dig more helmeted looks more so for predators. Uh, like I had mentioned, he does come with a ton of different other accessories. We'll actually just put him down right here for a second. There we go. He comes with uh, not only one spear, which is painted very nicely in this very light yellowy gold, and also in the uh, silver there in the middle and on the sides. But he does also come with an extended version of that same staff as well, depending on what way you want to have him displaying, displayed with it. Oops, I keep dropping stuff. He does also come with a whip, long predator-like whip. It uh, it's just rubbery. It doesn't doesn't seem to have a wire frame or anything like that to it. So it's just a rubber whip there. As Spotted already mentioned, he comes with a secondary plasma caster shoulder-mounted cannon that again has hinges at the top, hinges at the middle. It's got three three points of articulation. It doesn't rotate. There's no ball joint on them. Just three, uh, two hinges, two hinges in total there. And I guess somewhat of a rotation once you have this pegged into place. 
The Predator also has that same same whip, which I really should have showed earlier, the same whip, but more of a retracted, rolled up version. And I love this kind of reddish copper that they've added to the handle of the whip. There's a peg on the whip, which if we can find the, where is the hole there? The hole is just on the side here. There we go. It's located just on the side there, right, right there. Well, you almost miss it because it's so dark in color. You can add the whip to the side, which actually I think looks quite nice. Even though I probably like more so having them displayed with the extended whip, I do in, I do like having it kind of rolled up on the side of his belt there. The Predator comes with not one, but two of the Predator shuriken blades that they have. Two of those. He's also got a secondary blade. And he comes with a couple of these little, uh, I guess these are the un unretracted these, but basically just un un non-opened up. He comes with two of those, which makes sense because he actually comes with two shurikens as well. Not only that as well, but the Predator comes with a ton of different hands. Basically every single possible hand you could possibly want for him is included. Hands ranging from open hands, open palms, uh, partially closed fist. Now he has closed fist currently, but if you want to display him with weapons, he has a couple of those. Uh, a completely flat palm. Another couple of flat palms there. Uh, mostly again, just a variation of different partially open hands or opened hands. And he comes with, uh, well, he comes with a total of nine and then of course counting the two on the on his hand as well and then lastly he also comes with the liquid which i believe he actually opens up and he pours in the swimming pool to melt or he pulls it on pours it on his prey to melt the uh, the evidence and he melts puts it in the pool i believe comes with that as well there's a little pocket also on the side here which presumably you could put that in there if you so wish I can't really think of anything else that you could put in there. I guess, no, it's not long enough really to hold the retracted whip. But uh, there's lots of different little areas where you can display things on the figure. It's got a couple of little hooks here as well that you can take these pouches. The pouches can just clip. Very, very small little hooks, mind you, but they can attach onto the little uh, hooks there too. Again, there's just a lot to be seen on the figure itself. He's got a little open compartment on his console with his detonator and there's also a little computer terminal. He's also got the retractable blades, which I think they actually do retract. Well, they do pull out and then you can replace it with that longer blade. Just put that back into place. I'll actually take the whip off too, because I feel like moving stuff around, it's going to pop right off. So I'll just take that off for the time being. Now, with this being a, a figure arts figure, he's going to certainly come with a lot of, a, of articulation, which is basically the reasoning why you want to pick up a lot of these figures. They, they are higher end, and they're also you know full of posability, uh, where you may not necessarily have that with other figures. And that's kind of like the big selling point for uh, SH figure arts figures. So let's go through the articulation together. He does have a ball joint in the head. He has a ball joint in the torso and it's one of the most articulated torsos I've ever seen on a figure. It's just incredible the amount of movement that you can get out of that torso. He has kind of the same idea in the lower torso section, which of course attaches itself to the, to the waist area. No restrictions at all when it comes to the legs. It's a swiveling point must be a ball socket that's attaching the leg to the yeah there's the ball joint right there he has a double hinge knee a pivot point and rotation ankle pivot in the foot and then of course for the arms the arms hinge forward and back he's got a, a secondary hinge which isn't always noticeable especially on a figure this bulky 
but he's got a secondary hinge that basically spreads the arms further out. It's not as known or showing here as much on the Predator figure just because he's got so much extra stuff going on here. He does have a rotation in the bicep. He does have a very good hinge in the elbow, almost the equivalent of a double ball joint hinge because there's a hinge there and a hinge there. And that rotates as well. And then finally for the hands, the hands are on, on their own independent ball joint too. Spot hasn't really picked up a lot of the uh, a lot of the SH figure arts pieces. Um, I think the problem is that when you start getting to things like predators, it's hard to gauge value for what you get out of them. Now, granted, this is an import figure. Um, you know the SH figure arts and SH monster art figures. Uh, you know when comic book stores get them, they get them and they're they're generally being charged at a more expensive price for what you're getting out of them. The downside though, where Spot's going with this, is when you start looking at this figure, back in the day, SH Figure Arts had a lot of posability, it had super detail, and it was really a go-to figure line if you wanted to get a, a high-end version release of figures. The downside though, is now that companies like NECA are producing something very similar or in some cases, much better. And now that they have more posability in the legs, the knees, and the elbows, and, and shoulders, to look at a figure like this, that's about 70, 60 to $80, depending on where you can find him, and looking at a NECA piece that's anywhere from 15 to 25, you're getting almost just as good of a figure from NECA for a much cheaper price. So it's kind of a little harder, harder pill to swallow. Uh, you are getting a smaller figure, you're, of course, getting a lot more of accessories, as we've looked at through the course of this video. But the downside, the trade-off, though, is you're paying a lot more for these types of figures. I would say as a Predator fan, it's a good figure, but all things considered, I actually could do just as well from getting a recent NECA release versus getting this guy right here. Would I recommend this guy? It's debatable. If you really like Predators, you might be inclined to fork over the extra for getting a Monster Arts release of this guy, but all things considered, you can probably do just as good with a NECA release. Today's collectible spot, Spot was having a look at the Bandai Alien vs. Predator. This was the SH Monster Arts. This was Predator Wolf and the heavy armed version, which he certainly was. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.